Praise God. Good to be before you again today. Hope you've been enjoying the other broadcast. If you haven't, you should start, you know. Uh, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we bless your name for another time like this. Thank you for the opportunity to look into your word, knowing that this word is a lamp on our feet and a light on our path. Ask, Father, that this word will indeed light up our path and our lives in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we receive your presence with us today, and we ask that you will teach us, open our eyes to behold wondrous things out of your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. How are you enjoying your stay? Or oh, as Daddy calls it, Daddy Joe calls it a compulsory holiday. I hope you're enjoying it, though, not getting bored, because someone told me today that, man, I can't wait to resume work. And I was like, what? You know, so there are people who really enjoy their work, and they can't wait to go back to work. And I'm sure there are some of you out there who are, who's, who are saying, man, I wish this could go on for, like, a few more months. Let me just get myself back. You know, but again, it depends on your mindset. Praise God. And... That's what we've been talking about from the first broadcast of this. We've been talking about taking your stand. And actually, it's tied to minding your mind, which we now led us to start talking about renewing your mind. You need to renew your mind. And we've talked about the fact that the world had programmed us to, a certain, to think a certain way, talk a certain way, and all that. That now needs to change, because if you carry that same thinking into the kingdom. The Bible says, as a man thinks, so is he. So if you carry the worldly thinking in, you will still begin to produce the same products you were producing in the world, even when you've received Jesus Christ into your life. So that thinking now has to change, and it changes from your commitment, or from your commitment to the Word of God, studying it, meditating, and listening to teachings such as this that will grow you in the Word and all that. For every one of us. Nobody's there yet, but the good thing is we've left. We may not have arrived, but the important thing is you've left. You know, so let's just keep at this and you will realize that things change every day. Praise God. And by now, if I ask you how you're doing, I expect you to say, I'm blessed and highly favored. And I will say amen to that for you and I in Jesus' name. All right. We said we're gonna to begin to look at determining or determine your outcome. So I, I, I was saying in one of the previous broadcasts that I was thinking, I was praying after, during this, um, in the wake of all of this COVID-19 thing. And I began to pray that evening. I just felt led to pray. And the Lord brought the story of the three Hebrew children to mind and began to talk to me about their outcome, that they determined their outcome. And I was thinking as I was praying, and I realized it is true. These guys were supposed to die. There was no hope for them. The king threw them into the furnace. They went in. The people who threw them in, who did not enter, died. So they had no right to leave. But they determined their outcome. And that was now what God was using to teach me that I can determine my, the outcome for me in these times. Though we seem to be confined, even though not totally, but most people are working from home and all that. But what outcome you get, you can determine. The world will tell you that, look, things are going to get rough, it's going to get tough. That's the outcome they have predicted. But guess what? What people predict or prophesy for that, that matter or speak will not come into effect until you agree with it. Two must agree. If the world says this is going to make people go broke, there's going to be, um, they're going to take people off work, people are not going to pay, you're not going to get salaries and all that and all that, a lot of things are going to happen as a consequence of this downtime, and you agree with them, and you expect that, guess what your outcome will be? Just what they said. And in the end, some people will say, oh, I told you so. No, it's not I told you so. I believed so. And I had it. And remember, the Bible says, believe in, you shall receive. What you believe is what you get. You know, in times when people don't really like to take responsibility, everybody gives a reason for everything, including me. Not too long ago, uh, several years back, my wife was harassing me about, look, when last did you tell me I love you? And I was thinking, well, I say it from time to time. 
And she said, no, think about it. And I thought about it. I really did not say that anything near often. You know, and I was trying to defend it and say, well, you know, you know I love you. You know I, this, I do all of this. this. The reason I do this is because I love you. But she said, yes, but from time to time, you should say it. I know some women, if you are listening with your husband now, you'll probably be doing like this to him. Show you here, you know. Don't blame me. You know, so uh, my excuse was, and maybe to the world, this will not be a bad excuse. I, I said to her that, look, uh, since I was born, <laughs> sounding like the Bible passage, since I was born, now I'm old. Since I was born till this very age, close to 50 now, that I've never heard my mom or my dad say to me, let me even remove me, say to each other, I love you. Talk less of now saying to me, I love you. But I knew they loved me because of all the sacrifices they put in place, they made for me. I knew. But because I never heard them say, I told her that that's the reason it doesn't come easy to me. And she said, well, you have to decide. You can change it. And even though I still argued, did not admit, but when I sat back and thought, you know, sometimes... The Holy Spirit will bring you back after you've made all your mouth and everything. The Holy Spirit will bring you back to what you ought to do. And he taught me and said, look, Emeka, you can make a change. You can decide to do it from today. Remember, our anchor of scripture still remains for now, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, because all of this is tied to a renewed mind. Romans 12, 2, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. said, my mind has to be renewed if I'm going to take responsibility. Because the way of the world is such that when somebody is a serial killer, they say, well, he was molested when he was a youth, and then they bullied him in school, so this is the reason he turned out this way. You know, I don't say I love you often. I say, well, I never heard my parents say it. So I give, I give an excuse for everything. But the truth is, you can determine your outcome. If you choose not to pick up the excuse, instead of finding an excuse not to do it, find a reason to do it. Find a reason to do what the word says to do. We can all make excuses. You know, I can't do this because of this. I can't do this because of this. But if I want to determine my outcome, I have to be the one who says, no, this is what I choose to do. I'm not going to embrace the excuse. I take responsibility for where I am, take you back to Genesis chapter 3. All of this, where we are today, started because some man and some woman refused to take responsibility. Do you remember the story in Genesis 3? God asked Adam, what? What's going on here? I'm paraphrasing now. And Adam was like, well, hey, the woman you gave me, that's the problem. And God was like, woman, what did you do? And the woman was like, hey, Lord, not me. The snake that you created, that's a problem. God didn't <laughs> realize recently that God didn't ask the snake, what's your problem? What happened? God just said, because you have done this. Because the first two he asked was the problem, they passed it and passed it. Maybe the snake would have passed the buck to something and said, Lord, it's you that created me. I don't know how you created me like this. You know, but in other words, God was looking for either of them to at least take responsibility. They didn't. Everybody blamed the other person. You have to take responsibility beginning from here now of what your outcome will be from this time of stay at home, this restriction, that restriction. Do you want to come out broke, prosperous, sick, healthy? It's your choice. Life and death. Choose life. That's what I will advise you. We'll get into this deeper in the next study. You know, just want to say God bless you. Thank you for listening. You are blessed and highly favored. Keep living the good life. Living it up in Jesus' name. Amen.